This is Princess Jordan here, like my mom's Queens of Queens page. Bringing you joy to your day and I hope that you here to stay But if you not, I hope you get to where you go and save them bad feelings I will erase if you let my vibe take its place How could you tell me you not into this? It's written on your face, I know me and you can relate This the way I communicate, if nothing else You gon' love the way I motivate this piece is for your mind Nowadays I know that it's hard to find If you been feeling like you been rushing, just take your time Stop and smell the roses, cause really nobody knows when God is gon' give his tokens, just know them doors is closing uh -huh. But while them doors is open, we gon' put this love in motion Can you hear the commotion? We do our own promotion Living our life behind the mic and it's wounding tonight Before we get back on the road, we finna get this right Everything will be okay if you want it to be you only experience what you want to see. Wake up, wake up. You're taking over by your hey everyone, Queens of Queens Radio here. This is part two of the N-word to use or not to use. That is the question. We still have everyone still on the line. Queen Maisha here. Queen Shavaka. Hey. Dan Kamati. Chris. Queen Janae. Dr. Sanq. And did I say King Ajalan already? Yes, please ask that question, please. Uh, please uh, like, subscribe, comment, share. The video is for you. The last part of the topic was what is the solution? If we're going to take away something, if we're going to take away Jesus, or we're going to take away the world, we have to replace it something. What can we replace the evil world with? Where is the opportunity? If we want to be. Uh, Talking about Nina was part of the word, or uh, is the right word. And we know we need to stop self sabotage. What is the solution? If we stop that word, what would we be replacing it? I'm uh, just asking the panel. Uh, let that be a uh, topic to discuss. in you at home, please. What would you like to see replaced with the word? Because we need to I think, I mean, I think that, you know, what. Uh, well, I, and I think I know everything is run by vibration. Even the words that you speak out of your mouth have a vibration behind it. That word, nigga, nigger, even though there's history behind it where, you know, you can say, oh, it meant this, it meant that. And in 2019, that word has a lot of negative uh, vibrations behind it. A word that we can use to replace simple, king, queen. If someone calls you a king, if somebody calls you a queen versus, versus calling you a nigger, a nigger, that has a different vibration to it. That's an uplifting word. That's knowing that you came from royalty. That's true. Mm. Okay, this, 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 this conversation, real quickly, this conversation has been had numerous times before us. Absolutely. Many, many moons ago, centuries, many, many moons ago, it, it was a word that we replaced it with, and we called ourselves Hey, brother, how you doing? Hey, brother, hey, blood. That came from the Vietnam War. My brothers talk about, you know, blood, brother, blood. What's up, my blood? What's up, blood? What's up, brother? So we did have a word to replace it. We ain't got to try to read, try to do no extra stuff to where we got to just come up with something. We, we, we already had something to replace that N word, and it was brother, and it was sister. But then we just let it get far gone, and wasn't nobody speaking up and out against it. We were just going along with the damn flow. And my thing is, too, I did a, I did a, uh, you know, because I, I had always, you know, with, with, it keeps you hearing from the youth. The youth, they still just learning their damn, they just still learning their life. They just still trying to figure stuff out. What I did was I asked the elders, 60s, 70s, the ones who come from the South and heard that right there, I, I asked them, how do they feel about that? Every one of them brothers and sisters said they weren't feeling that right there because they knew that after that word was used, there was some terrorism that was involved in that right there. And if it was presented to our elders, who has sense, who's very intelligent and all that right there, about the about Nava and all that right there, they're going to say, well, baby, if it was Nava, how come we just don't say Nava? How we got to say what the white man say then, baby? <laughs> so today, what are we going to use to replace you? Can I, uh, can I just jump in there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please do. Okay, so um, I I got I got elders. My, my elders, uh, 
um, who actually, you know, consider, consider themselves conscious, uh, still use the word. Um, they still use the word nigger uh, when they're, or nigger or whatever when they're describing um, a condition um, of, of, of a, you know, a, a, a certain type of mentality of when we're discussing consciousness. But I've, I've, I've also seen them get into situations or confrontations where they use the word uh, uh, I, I think I think there's kind of like two two types of uh, uh, mindsets uh, amongst our people after slavery that, that has existed, to, you know, since, since it ended, where, where you got one side who says don't use it, and you got one side who's, who's like okay with using it. And uh, well, normally the weak people are okay with using it, though. Well, well, that's a different type of thing. The people who use it don't consider themselves. So you got people who use it who don't consider themselves to be weak. So it it can be a matter of opinion. Um, well, not necessarily the, the ones that conform to all of this bullshit with these white folks. Go ahead, well, let me let me just say this, sir. I gave you a chance to talk. You did a whole lot of talking. Um, I haven't barely said anything. But I'd like to speeches. I just said, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I can't go ahead if you keep cutting me off or following up behind what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to um, explain the different perspectives. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I didn't expect you to go on to a speech. So go ahead and make your point, brother. Okay, so what's the definition of a speech? As we don't go there, what's a speech? Is that is that ten words or less? Or fifteen words or less? How many words can I use before I get to say? Brother, we on a topic. Speak your piece, brother. Okay, I'm going to speak my piece. All right, so you have two sides. Right there, brother. We can get on with the show. You have two sides. You got a side that's for the word, using the word. You got a side that's against using the word. Whether one side is weak, whether the other side is strong, is a difference of opinion. Both, both sides can look at the other side as being weak and the other side as being strong. Either way it goes, um, you will constantly go around in circles. It will be a never-ending conversation over whether the word should be used or not. And so you have some people who have noticed that the word is going to continue to be used, um, like Matuli Shakur and uh, Tupac Shakur. Matuli Shakur was uh, Tupac's stepfather. He was a, a, you know, a revolutionary in the Black Power movement um, uh, for you know a very long time. He's very influential, uh, very influential in the Black Liberation Army and the Black Panther Party. And they came up because because they realized that Black people, like huge numbers of Black people in the street, were not going to give up the use of the word. So, um, probably in a tradition, a very African tradition tradition which which compensates but which means to compensate for for uh that which is you know which is like uh, if you think about compensation most people think about compensation as, as finances mm-hmm. but we're talking about like light, light light compensates for dark so so you know compensation is like a solution and their solution was never ig- ignorant getting go to the compass that's where that came from because they looked at it as saying well, what's you know how can you get rid of this word right uh, then I, the last thing I just want to say is, if you all are familiar with, the, with which is what is called a conditioned response, um, when the slave master was saying that word and he was uh, ripping us and beating us and torturing us and using the word nigger, the, the, the idea was to associate it with the, with the conditioned response. It's like every time you say it or every time it was used and there was violence or deception accompanied with it, like those those guys in that truck, I they, I wanted to say I've been wanting to catch them white boys in that truck that, that always screaming nigger uh, and and throwing stuff at me for years. I've, I've had I've had three situations where that's happened to me. It always you know uh, seems like and they all, they're, 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 they're usually different white boys, but it's the same. You know, it's like they all you know uh, plan to do it or something. But the the, the, the thing is is that. Um, <laughs> 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 we, 
because there's a condition which is associated with the life. To me, to me, the, the power we we give power to the word when 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 we associate our when we continue to associate ourselves with the word. Like like if if, if every time the word is in use and you respond with some kind of reaction to the use of the word, it, it's like um. Uh, so, uh, we we uh, we used to have dogs that we attacked to in this Wahi, right? And and there was one word that we could use, and the dog would just go crazy and attack whoever we pointed at, right? And it was Kata. If you said Kata, the dog would just go loose and just go after who you who you pointed at. And that's what it reminds me of when I hear the, the word. Somebody says the word nigger, and then we go, uh, you know, some of us go off and we start attacking a person, uh, or, you know, but there's some kind of response where it's like associated, where we, we kind of, we kind of take ownership of the word, like if we just, uh, 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 you know, stay with us, and, you know, my personal opinion, we, we need to just let it alone. It's not going to be banned. There's no way. It's impossible. The word is impossible to stop everybody on this planet from using it. So, um, anyway, all right, I'm done. So, no, no, bro, no, bro, stay on, stay. So my question, my question to you is, so why do you think we respond or react to it? Straight out. I think I think we respond and we react to it because white people have conditioned us to respond and react to it. No, we respond oh, and react to it because it's clear already. It's not being 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 clear with that word was thrown around nine times out of ten, one of our ass was getting killed or getting soda through at our ass or getting something was something was involved in that shit. So the war you're getting a lot of us like, hey, fuck this shit, this motherfucker, you know, this ain't just no damn word like this. Because this word was just not no word. They wasn't just calling it the matter to see it. It was terrorism that was involved in that shit. Yeah, that and, and that and what you got what you did describe what both of you are describing is what is called a condition response. That's what it is. What it's what it's called. It's, I understand that, you know, it turns everything up, but I'm saying that's the reason why a lot of people responded to that because it was terrorism. It wasn't just no damn work that was being I'm, thrown around. I'm familiar it with it. I, 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 ne- I never met, you know, I never met my my great uncle, um, you know, but he, he was lynched. They called him nigga on the tracks when, when he got run over. You know what I'm saying? It, it, so the, I mean, I'm very familiar with the use of the word. All of us are. I don't think any any of us on the phone is not, is not familiar with it. But when I say a condition response, so what I'm saying is, if the word was, even if the word is not used, right? White people who use just because they're not using the word around you, with the race of white supremacists, just because they're not using the word around you, doesn't mean they're not thinking it, and it doesn't mean. That they're not going to stop using deception and violence against you because they believe you're one, even though they don't use the word. It's not going to stop that. And 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 the condition, like I said, the condition response is if 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 somebody if somebody knows, I know, well, I know with me. Okay, it's, like I said, I, I, if, if somebody if someone knows that they can use a word to control you, right? If 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 you if, if you're concentrating, you're working in a laboratory, and uh, uh, you're trying to solve the problem in the laboratory, and this racist white boy knows that all he's got to do is call you a nigger, and you stop focusing on the experiment and solving the problem and turning your attention to jam him up about calling you a nigger, then he got you because he knew already that all he had to do was just throw that word at you and you were just going to just lose focus and, and start talking to him about it. To me, that's a condition, that's a condition response. That's that's one example of how it can be used. But, you know, and mind you, I'm not fully using the word. I, you know, I'm, when it comes to the code, you know, I practice name, uh, no name calling. Stop name calling. I don't call anybody a name that they don't want to be called. Uh, but 
I also know that it's impossible to hit, to, to, to eliminate the word. And I'm, I'm not, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, trying to track everybody down and tell them to stop choosing it my, myself because, you know, I, I just got, for me, there's the other, other more important constructive things that I can do for my people besides that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's not about talking nobody down. I just hide in the bushes and wait for somebody to do to jump out like the big hit for me. That's not what we talk about. We, we just learned about adults being responsible and seeing that you're doing something that ain't right and just speaking truth and power about a particular topic. You know, a great way to look at this right here, too? Just say, for instance, that we're talking about a person's favorite football team. Let's say the Cowboys. Or the 49ers. You know, you're a fan of that team. The same way a lot of us folks be a fan of our people and a fan of ourselves. And then another person, they say, well, oh, man, your team is the Cowgirls? Oh, uh, man, you focus on Cowgirls? Or they say, instead of the 49ers, they say the Faggot Niners. They keep talking about your team, disrespecting your team. And then all of a sudden, you just say, you know what? They've been saying this for so long. You know what? And then somebody say to you, Hey, what's your favorite team, man? Oh, man, my favorite team is the Faggot Niners. And this is the fan of the 49ers right here. Or oh, my favorite team is the Faggot Niners. Or the fan of the Cowboys. Talking about uh, my favorite team is the Cowgirl. How would that fan look? That fan would look full of shit. Conforming to what somebody said. That's why the Corley told me. You know what happened? You would be a damn fool to try to get some talk about, you know, what, my just to say that, brother. And what you do have? Faggot Niners. Hey, hey, you know what? 
if, if they call your ass again, if they call you that shit again after that, I bet they have this. <laughs> hey, uh, let, me, let me give you time to answer though. You, you right? You, you right? Yes, yes or no? Yes or no. Uh, now, as as a child, no. It did. And, and the, the last That's time I was called a nigga by a white person, it was driving by in a truck. It was flying by in a truck. <laughs> and at the time of my status, <laughs> At, at the time of my state of mind, because, because they made me, because, because they made me flash back to all the other times. Yeah, they made me flash back to all the other times. Say that again. I think that's the California thing. That truck is kind of fun. It is. It is. They know good and well. They got to be flying by when they hollered out. They already know exactly, you know. Oh, he said, he said he's still trying to find the motherfucker. I'm trying to find the motherfucker. That might be the only no, way. way. I'm gonna go, where I'm going to go for this. On the, on the white boys. I'm trying to find the white boys in the truck, too, though. <laughs> they deal with that truck. <laughs> 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 they deal with that truck. He was a white truck. He was a white truck. He was a white truck. spoken in a while now again i don't like using the word i wish we could just not use it at all but i've explained to to people who are not black why we use it to each other which again i don't think we should it's kind of like my child like my little girl if she does something wrong i could spank her if you spank her we gonna have an issue she could do the same thing in front of you but if you put your hand on my child we gonna have an issue so it's kind of the same thing where it's like a black person can tell stories to another black person about how they've been treated wrong in this world because of their skin tone and their hair and all the other uh, traits that we have, but a white person can't. So we can spank each other, but them don't, they don't, they don't have that right to say that. So for me, I, I don't cringe when I hear a black person saying it to another black person, but I can't help but cringe when you're not black and you're saying it. I, I just, it's just part of me. Say that again. Okay. No, I'm, I'm Queen Shabaka. I'm trying to get all the ladies. You know, I, I want to hear the perspective from all the ladies. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to say that. Go ahead, Queen Shabaka. I cringe. It's I cringe when I hear it from a Caucasian saying it to somebody of color. I, I cringe when I hear men with their pants sagging saying it to one another. I cringe because we know that it long ago, even though we moved forward, like the it it really comes down to the freedom of the mind. If you're if your mind is still in bondage of what happened four hundred years ago and you haven't and some people haven't recovered from that and, or like you said, or like someone said, being raised in the South and where the segregation was going on and that word was used along with boy, um, at the end of that word, it, it always made me cringe. Um, I remember being in high school and hearing, going to the mall and hearing somebody say it and wanting to, to Talk to person, and he was like, "You inward will never be anything. Just keep walking, and you just want to punch him in the face. Like the, that's how, like that's what that word it it condemns." 
condition. Just like women using the word the B word to each other. Like, I cringe when I hear women call up her queen. Why are you calling another queen that? You know, and it's the same thing. The N word. You're calling another person. And an N word is just, it's the same to me. It's cringing. Like, there, sh- there should be, um, it's, it's a learning curve because not too many people understand the magnitude of that word. Or, um, or the healing that has to take place for them to even listen to it, especially this day and age, you know, with, you know, the presidential and, the, you know, people dealing with that. So, yeah, it's definitely a word that just makes people cringe. Just like calling my teen cowgirl, it makes me cringe. I'm just kidding. Now, now, you guys, we're getting close to having to close this discussion out. So, um, you guys have anything that's burning, a burning desire in your heart that you want to share with us and everyone who's going to listen to this? Please do it now. I have a, a, a conscious, a woke, revolutionary, liberation, more Hebrew, uh, Islam, nation Islam, conscious. Challenge. Let February be a nigga free month. Uh, Challenge yourself to just. I like that. You know, that Black History Month, whether we do, whether whether we can change the world or not, (laughs) in honor of the ancestors that had a hard time with the word, you can pick the word up after February if you don't feel good about using it. But let's challenge ourselves. Let's challenge ourselves in the month of February for everybody who say they're on a platform to bring about betterment. To our people. In honor of my ancestors for the second month of Black History Month of February, the Negro Week, and went to Black History Month, let's challenge ourselves. Uh, can I just to be disciplined enough? Or is it a habit? Is it like crack? Is it like at all? Is it something that's so better than us that we can't let it go? Because we make no excuses to hold on to it. Brother uh, 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 D. Dan Timothy, two years, I argue with him. And, and debating with him and reasoning with him and went to Naga, went to uh, the Ninja and Nagasaki and I went to Nagas Nagas and Nigeria. And and we Niger, had some conversations and too. Uh huh. Yep. And so, and, and, and um, you know, because I went to the prison, we couldn't use the word, you know. And I did it for like that. I'm saying I did it from all throughout the 80s. I didn't start using the word again until 19. 
that if they were selling us, if they were calling us not Naga, which is king or queen, they were calling us nigga, nigga, nigga. That word is, that is, that is, that is brutal, man, to, to, to continue to call ourselves that. Was it like this? 400 years ago, a black man is a slave owner. A white man is a slave. A black man is calling that white man honky. He don't identify himself as a European prince, Queen Harry, I mean, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Harry, uh, Princess Di, he ain't giving him none of that. He's calling him honky. Fast forward 2019, the white man still calling himself honky. As a black man, how do we look at that white man? We look at him like he's stupid. They're looking at us like we're stupid. Yeah. They have nothing to do with nothing. They're looking at us like we're stupid. Hell yeah. You know what? Our young babies from- that we are having, our babies we are having, we need to start calling them niggas. We need to start calling them princes and princes and letting them know that you are royal blood. You will be a king or a queen. Simple as that. I love my queen for, for saying we can start calling ourselves kings and queens. Why? Because that deserves respect and honor. That's all it is. We can only give a king and queen respect and honor. Absolutely. Go ahead, you I'm good. We're a queen. From my perspective, we, we, we just have been conditioned to accept the generous actions that make it seem like it's absolutely nothing. Queen Shabaka just recently touched on this not too long ago, too. So we always got a double standard but behind certain stuff, too. You know, the black woman call each other bitch, 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 bitch. But as soon as the man say bitch, oh, motherfucker, who you calling the bitch? It's the same way with the N-word, too, though. You know, we, we both go to those derogatory terms, though. The same way a black woman shouldn't call herself no bitch. We shouldn't be calling ourselves no damn nigga, too. If it's Naga, let's call ourselves Naga, then it just cut that shit out altogether. And the thing that will make it catch on, too, is that we're getting at these artists, these rap artists, because that's, that's how the word spread like wildfire to begin with. It was done through the damn music. How people thought they were trying to identify with black culture. They, 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 it's they, poison. They, they, a lot of those rappers are poison. Mm-hmm. Hey, real quick, I'm I mean, I'm in agreement. I'm, I'm, I'm challenging myself to leave another one. Because when I look back in my mind, no matter how much you want to seem like it's all word and taking the ball back, when we just come to my mind, like, fuck those niggas. Bitch ass niggas, punk ass niggas. I'm going to kill that nigga. I'm going to beat that nigga ass. Right? I mean, we really had some ends, right? I hate niggas, man. Bitch ass niggas. I mean, I mean really. It, 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 you know, no matter how we want to kill them, there's some aggression behind that towards this, towards self hate. You know, I'm a real nigga. He's a fake nigga. See them niggas, all niggas, nigga, 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 nigga. And so, um, I'm gonna put a plan with it. The Father King has a lot of, and they have, so I gotta come with a whole new mindset. If we gonna reach these babies, we gotta come with a whole new way of existing, right? That they can carry on. Because if they gonna take from the slave plantation and justify some shit, they're gonna be stuck in some shit. And I'm just giving the real. I usually don't ask, but, you know, that's just how the word uh, affects us, right? When we get mad, you know, we say that in a very derogatory way to each other uh, also. And so we can't just put a mask behind it. We accept accept too much. Your name, brother, your your name is King Adelon, right, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? Your your name is King Adelon, right? Yes, sir. Not nigga Adelon, right? No. And and, and and this radio station that we own, it's queens the queens. It ain't bitches the bitches, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Can I just say one thing and I'm gonna close? I gotta hang up. It's one o'clock in the morning here in um Washington, DC. Peace, love, and black power to all of you. Thank you for having me black on power. the show. Black power, hey, y'all come on in. And I do refer to I do not refer to my queens as bitches. I refer to them as queens. Absolutely. I do refer to yeah. my men, to the men as kings, and I always honor them in the morning and say good morning, kings and queens. You know, it's not good morning, you niggas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> No, I mean, I do know how to use the word, but like I said, it, the only way we can get it back is if we claim it. Claim it back. You know what I'm saying? We, we don't need, so we don't need to claim it, though. We don't need to claim it. All uh, right. We can, I, I'm not saying it like that. I already, I sent you guys. I, it, 
Oh, what happened? Um, uh, from Africans of East Asia and the Nagas. If you want to learn anything about it, it's a three hour video from um I forget the professor name. You know, could you do could you could you text start, could you text it to me and I could hook it I could I attach it. Okay, I thank you so much. Well yeah, thank you for staying up so late anything. so late for us to be on our panel. No problem. Thank you for having me on. Anytime, just let me know. Okay, thank okay. you. Have a good night. Peace and black power. Absolutely. Queens of Queens Radio. This was the N word to use or not to use. That is the question. We had two parts. Part one, part two. This is part two. So if you if you guys are uh, if you heard this one and you didn't hear part one, please go and you'll find a link to part one. I'm Queen Maisha and the host who's been with we've been together since the day one of this show. Yes. Queen Shavaka. Queen Shavaka. And we have uh, King Ajalon. King Ajalon, come on, like, subscribe, share. Coming. Absolutely. We have Chris, our guest. Thank you guys. Thank you guys very much for having me on the show. I appreciate it. I love our great communication. We can reach our brothers and sisters and we can stop being confused by this world. Absolutely. Okay. And we have Didan Kamadi. Green, black, and salutations. I love my people unconditionally. That's why I'm passionate about the things that I say, it, it's just all about love and knowing that we can do better, you know, so that's just, you know, that's it. Absolutely, and then the last, we have a doctor on the line. <laughs> Good doctor, thank you. Um, uh, thank you for having me. It's always, it's always uh, constructive. Um, it's real constructive. We like to hear the perspectives of uh, all the different minds <laughs> uh, that's come together. And um, I just, I, I I want. I just want to say that real quick that uh, uh, Dr. Francis Cliff Wilson, uh, who's a, a black psychiatrist that was practicing in the United Independent Consistory Code, uh, she was in the in the camp that um, disagreed with the use of the word, and um, she often said that if, we, if we're going to use words, we should use words that are going to reveal the truth of the condition that we're currently in. Um, so she said, anytime you feel like you have to use the word nigger, nigger stay with them as racism and white supremacy. Um, and that's what I Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you all, for all you guys' uh, information uh, sharing with us. Queen Shavaka, did you want to say something? No, I said that was powerful. That's oh, yeah, absolutely. Powerful. So this is Queens of Queens Radio. Kings and Queens discussion group and we are out. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for participating. Queen Maisha here. We will talk to you guys later. <laughs>